thought that it was actually kind of beautiful that she held her anger and refused to invalidate her feelings just to give Gary peace of mind. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly, she's Julie, and we're here to find love. We're back again for another Bachelor recap, and this time we are on the Golden Bachelor season finale. We are in the end, we know what happens, we know who he chooses. If you haven't watched it yet, there are all kinds of spoilers coming at you, so be prepared. We are talking about it. He picked Teresa and Leslie went home. There is so much to get into about how Leslie handled the breakup, how Gary handled the breakup, and also what we think about Gary and Teresa's relationship. So. We're gonna get into it. We'll also touch on Bachelor in Paradise episode nine at the end of this video, a little bit. We don't have too much to say about them. <laughs> we have nothing to uh, say. <laughs> really not much. It's really all about Golden Bachelor today and about Leslie and Gary. For those of you who don't know us, we are two dating coaches who analyze the relationship psychology and dating themes on reality television shows, especially all of the Bachelor shows like The Golden Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise. If you're into this kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can follow along and join the conversation. Let's jump right into the breakup because that was the juiciest part of the entire episode. He did a little bit of a heel turn in the way that he handled his conversation with Leslie. And after the final rose, he admitted on stage that he chose chose Teresa because he thought that she knew how to nurture and be in a healthy relationship. And I have a really big problem with that passive aggressive way that he framed it because his sentence was loaded with all of this gross moral judgment. It's giving only people that have been in healthy relationships or people whose parents have never divorced deserve love. And that's not the case. I think there's something about that statement that really poked at Leslie's viewpoint that she felt like she was damaged goods because she communicated that consistently throughout their breakup. And she was totally blindsided. He had said way too much in a lot of the episodes leading up to the final episode, he told her that he really believed that she was his girl, that he loved waking up next to her. And because he built her up so much, the fall was so much harder because of how high he had built her up. In spite of her usual instincts towards like emotional preservation, I felt like she really gave into that. And that's why it was really hard to see her talking to Gary and being so devastated on stage. But I have like a very, a little bit of a hot take about how Leslie handled, I think the wallowing of that breakup, because do I believe that Gary deserved all of the heat that was coming at him? Yes. Do I believe that Leslie was also reinforcing some really unhealthy dating narratives? Yes. Mm, she got oh a gosh. lot. I'm so excited for this hot take. I'm, I'm like, a little bit scared. I'm like on the edge of my seat here. Can't wait to hear <laughs> what you're about to say. I really, really loved how Leslie was presenting herself on stage of Gary, but I felt like she took it a little bit too far with her no one picks me mentality. And she had this mm. really big monologue about like, he was embarrassing her on national TV. She bought this dress, mm. she had this vows, that she's had all of these heartbreaks. She couldn't believe that Gary was setting her up to be brokenhearted on TV. And I understand a lot of where she was coming from, but she immediately went into this victim stance that unfortunately, a little bit of what Gary has said about why he chose Teresa, he completely said it the wrong way, but it did validate, I believe, why he chose Teresa. Because I think that if Teresa was in that position, if he decided to choose Leslie over Teresa, would she be devastated? Absolutely. Would she also wish him well? Yes. And I think that's something that he wanted to choose in his partner. He wanted to choose mm. someone that was compatible with how they would handle the ending of a breakup. I totally agree with you that some of the ways that he explained why he chose Teresa and why he didn't choose Leslie were not worded the best. It did feel a little bit, there were a few things that he said that I was like, ouch, like you just dated and broke up with someone publicly who we know is has dealt with a history of feeling not wanted, not chosen, and feeling like she yeah. couldn't, you know, have a relationship that felt successful to her. And so it was a little bit poorly worded, some of the things that he was saying about why he chose Teresa. I did have like kind of a few moments where I was like, I don't know, it feels a little bit um 
it's like poking at like a it's like he poked at her wounds in a few ways in these very very subtle ways and some of the things that he was saying I do feel like this is the great crash that you Julia had been predicting for a while like you had been saying like Gary the way that he it talks and leans into relationships is something that sets people up to get hurt and we had been guessing at who it would be and of course now that we see that it's Leslie it was even huger than we had even imagined at least for me I didn't realize that it was going to be this big of a blow up but truly the things that Leslie said were all things that you and I have been saying like these are things that this this person is going to feel based on what Gary has said the like you're the one and like I like the things about like you know planning these trips together and talking about like these like very specific things that they would do together in the future and I need you with my morning coffee like the types of things that he had been saying to Leslie were so they gave her every reason to be confident that she was going to be the one. He literally said, you're the one. I think you're the one. <laughs> he literally said, you're my girl. He said those words to her. And words are really powerful. We are responsible for the things that we say and the way that our words impact people. And I don't think that Gary was thinking about that. I mean, he literally said in his After the Final Rose that he was caught in the moment. But caught in the moment isn't an excuse. And, you know, this is what happens when we don't think about what effects our words are going to create in another people even the words that are ostensibly good things to hear of course everyone wants to hear like you're the one I want you with my morning coffee everyone wants to hear that so he's thinking I'm saying nice things to Leslie but you have to think about what expectations those words are going to create right if you tell someone you're the one they're gonna think they're the one <laughs> and that's gonna be that feeling that assumption that expectation is going to be there even after this moment ends and you have to think about that. You have to think about that when you are in the moment. I feel like Gary showed his big downfall, which is that he is, you know, Mr. Perfect dating guy, but in a way that almost it's like he's so willing to say the right thing without actually thinking about will me saying this actually be for this person's benefit or is it actually going to be something that will hurt them more down the line, which is what happened with Leslie. And so, you know, he let her believe that it was safe to trust him. He let her believe that it was safe to feel secure in the relationship. And that wasn't true, <laughs> you know, and she said it really well. You know, you led me down a path. You led me down a path and then you took a turn and you left me there. And that is what happened. And the metaphor that I always think about when it comes to falling in love is if you were telling someone, hey, it's safe to jump off that cliff. It's safe to jump off that cliff. It's safe to jump off that cliff. I'm going to be at the bottom to catch you. And you kind of lead someone there and you're like, okay, go ahead and jump off. And they take the leap and you're like, actually, I don't want to be down there anymore. I decided that I'm going to go check out some other things. That is your, you, you did that. That is your actions that's going to lead them to getting hurt when they crash at the bottom of that cliff. That's always what I think of in the context of dating when you, quote unquote, lead someone on like that makes it sound like it makes it sound like you did something like you were intentionally trying to trying to hurt someone that's not what I think that Gary was trying to do but I do think that his actions directly led to what Leslie felt so I do think that Gary has something has made mis missteps in this journey and that's the reason why I actually believe that when Leslie reacted the way that she did with Gary in the breakup and in the after the final rose I actually kind of think her anger was justified because I think that when she was definitely in the moment of the actual breakup, when she was in the moment of that actual breakup and she was just feeling all of those emotions and all of these really vulnerable things were coming out of her about feeling like she's never chosen and feeling embarrassed that it was happening, happening on national TV. Like some of those things to your point were like really pulling on these really, I don't know, like one track tropey things like very like seeing yourself as the victim in this larger story they were pulling on those things and also in the moment of that very intense emotional breakup I kind of think it's okay to be honest that those thoughts are those are the thoughts that are crossing your mind because when you're in your lowest moments you will have those like really awful ugly thoughts of like oh dear god I'm like completely unlovable oh dear god like 
it's happening again. Like I wasn't chosen again. Oh my God. Like this is the story of my life. Like we all do this. We all have some version of these like horrible things that are like absolutely inaccurate that we think about ourselves. And in our lowest moments, those are the thoughts that come out. And I think Leslie was truly in one of the lowest moments, I would guess, of her life when Gary broke up with her in that very sudden way there. And so I wasn't upset by the fact that she had those narratives about herself. And I kind of loved that she was like, because Gary was also like, oh, don't say that, don't think that. And she was like, I can think whatever I want. And I actually kind of loved that she said that because she shouldn't be told that she's not allowed to feel those those horrible things that she was feeling. Yes, I agree with you. She needs to heal some of that stuff. There's some <laughs> law, big picture wounding there that, that yeah. needs to be Some big cognitive to. distortions. Yeah. Yes, because it's not true. Obviously, she's not this unworthy, unlovable whatever like this is not true these are not true stories and her not getting chosen doesn't say anything about her worth exactly and also I think that it's okay for her to be in that moment and just feel through those feelings that she was having and then in the after the final rose when she sat down to explain to Gary here's the reason why I was as broken as I was the things that you said really did make me believe you assured me you I mean she didn't say exactly what he said in the fantasy suites but it sounds like he basically told her he was gonna pick her slash we saw him on camera basically tell her that he was gonna pick her so it was you know I think it was very justified and she was basically like these are the things that you did that caused the pain that I had and I think that if you hadn't done this I wouldn't felt as much pain as I did and Gary's response to me was kind of lukewarm. He was kind of like, well, I did the best that I could in the moment. I'm so sorry. I'm sad that I hurt you, but I did the best that I could. And to me, that was a little bit of a non-apology. As you know, he's saying the words, I'm sorry, but he's not actually saying anything that he would have done differently. He's not re- expressing any regret about any of the actions that he took. And even the specific things that she said he shouldn't have done, he was kind of like, well, uh, I'm I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm just trying to be as gracious as I can. And I think, of course, it's true. He's not perfect. It's not saying that he needs to do, it, to do everything right. But the fact that he couldn't say, like, you're right. I shouldn't have done that. And me doing that did directly lead to the pain that you felt. And in the future, I would want to handle these situations differently. The fact that he couldn't say that to me made me feel like, you know, he would do it again. (laughs) And so if I'm Leslie, I wouldn't accept that apology either. I would just, you know, she was as gracious as she could be in the moment, which is like, I understand what you're saying. But I was like, good, don't accept that apology because it wasn't really an apology. It was not linked. It was, he said the word, I'm sorry. He felt remorse, but it was not linked to any action. I don't think he's taking any actions differently based on what he said anyways. Maybe he'll reflect and decide that he needs to approach situations differently in the future but based on the way he explained himself in that situation I was kind of I appreciated Leslie holding her ground and just being kind of like you know what you don't you know you don't seem to want to do anything different and that's okay and I'm not going to fight you on this on national television that's fine I understand what you're saying and she did wish him well she held on to her anger and I think it's right rightfully so but I I kind of appreciated the way she handled this overall that would be my kind of take on the situation I think that's also another big mismatch between Gary and Leslie that we saw on TV he didn't really have this empathetic shared understanding of how deep the story was for Leslie and why Mm. he did need to be even more careful with her because I get what Gary's saying you can go into your experience you can be super earnest don't be naive be understanding of where she's coming from but because he maybe hasn't had those past experiences especially the way that it's really wounded her he didn't understand that he needed to hold back And like that would have been a bigger demonstration of love instead of him Mm. saying all of these things. He could have really been like, this is something that is very deep to Leslie. I want to be careful. I'm going to hold myself back. I'm not going Mm. to say certain things to make her feel a certain way just because I'm diving into my experience completely. So that was, I think that was something that became so clear like he just did not understand as much 
of why she couldn't give him the same graciousness and it's because like this is something that she is really working on and dealing with and for Gary to kind of repeat that without really thinking about it showed yeah. that's not the partner for her the partner for her would be absolutely rock solid in the way that he would dedicate and say certain vows knowing that Leslie is really going to build her life and a part of her around that. Yeah, I think that's a really good point that, you know, Gary didn't think enough about this specific woman and her story, all of the vulnerabilities that she has shared with him about, you know, I've never done till death do us part. These are things that are really so difficult to talk about and I know that so many people and specifically women have narratives about themselves related to their relationship history and relationships that they haven't or have not been able to hold and yes those narratives we shouldn't have them yeah our worth shouldn't be defined by these things but we all this is the water we swim in women are told to define their worth based on their ability to catch a man and have a man, you know, get down a 1D for them. And so the fact that Leslie has these feelings, I think is very justified, one. And two, Gary knows, knew this about her. And so I think he should have held her with even more care. I mean, I think he should have held her with care anyway, even if it wasn't Leslie, this girl with this whole story about, you know, not being, feeling chosen. Like even if it wasn't Leslie, I think he needed to hold any woman, any person that he dates with more care, but specifically with Leslie, I think he needed to be more careful than he was. And he didn't do that. And even after she said, this is what I wanted you to do, he still didn't say that he would do that or he would have done that or he would want to do that for somebody else. And so it it did feel like a ultimately a mismatch in terms of what their totally. expectations are for dating and for partnership because and and truthfully i am inclined to uh, i wouldn't say take leslie's i guess i yeah I, I guess i'm inclined to take leslie's side on this because i really do believe i just see so many people get so hurt by this exact behavior of somebody who to your point it was like he was feeling good in those moments with leslie he wanted to tell her all of those things he was it it feels so good to tell someone that you love them you want a future with them that you know whatever you're i'm picking you and just like relishing and then seeing the look on their face like that feels good gary got something out of those moments and he was even saying that to her at the final rose after the final rose, he was saying that to her. He was like, you know, I'm going to cherish those memories. I'm like, shut up, Gary. You you get to cherish those memories. But for Leslie, they're going to be full of pain. You took something. You got to feel good. And you're going to walk away reflecting on those moments and how good they felt. But Leslie doesn't get that. And so in a lot of ways, I think when we do this thing of getting caught in the moment, we have to recognize that it is at core, it is a selfish behavior, right? It is us relishing in how good it feels to tell someone that you love them and have them react to that and love you back and you're relishing in that even though you know you're not actually sure if you're gonna you know follow up on those promises you're not actually sure if you're gonna wake up the next morning and feel the same way it is selfish to do that at the end of the day you're being careless and reckless with someone's feelings and I appreciate Leslie's mm, how do I say it it's kind of like watching her in this scene it's it's like uncomfortable because you kind of just want them to like make peace and make nice like when they're like sitting at that after the final rose I wanted them to have like a Gary and Faith moment where they were like okay well we wish the best for each other and we hug it out and it's all sweet and hunky-dory but I actually and so when Leslie didn't do that I was at first I was like uncomfortable and I was kind of like oh she seems so angry but then the more I thought about it I was I thought that it was actually kind of beautiful that she held her anger and refused to invalidate her feelings just to give Gary peace of mind because Gary didn't give her that kind of consideration throughout the time of them dating. And I think Leslie giving that to herself and protecting her own feelings in a way that he didn't, I was like, honestly, this is beautiful. I I love to see Leslie stick up for her her own emotions, her own anger even if it means making other people uncomfortable. So I was, I don't know, I kind of appreciated Leslie overall, even though it was hard to watch. I kind of appreciated it. <laughs> I really appreciated how she was so 
articulate in the way that she expressed her emotions and she was able to really feel it you can tell that she's been processing it a lot since their breakup and because she's holding on to it it really is I think equal to how much she did love Gary and how much she probably still loves Gary because the Mm. anger that you feel is proportional to the feelings that you had for the person it's just being changed into like this new energy this new feeling and Mm. it's also a very specific moment of time she it's only been a few months they're still Mm. she's very much healing in this journey and I think that in the next year two years three years four years there is an opportunity that they could revisit this and look at it through a different lens because this was the hard thing about watching last night's episode I totally saw Leslie's perspective and I also saw a little bit of Gary's perspective and it felt hard to feel like who like to think about who I was rooting for because I just wanted them both so deeply to find love and that's what the golden bachelor like outside of Gary and just how badly he dated at the end of the season and Leslie's anger that she was holding on to in the after the final rose there are two older people that are looking for a second chance for love. They're vulnerable. Mm-hmm. They've really put themselves out there. And I don't think that Gary handled it the best way, especially when feelings are really starting to get invested. But I don't think that he did it maliciously. And I really mm-hmm. feel like his Teresa decision, my in my opinion, I think it happened literally in the 11th hour. I don't think that he was expecting it. And... I think he did make a decision based more on logically, fiscally, responsibly, what makes sense with the stable love that he was looking for. And stable meaning that secure attachment and the calmness that he was feeling with Teresa. Absolutely, like she was completely blindsided and all of her feelings were completely validated because he did change his mind in literally the last second. And I... I hope that she gets the golden bachelor right and I know that she's gonna find love with the person that really will hold her tenderly and maybe yeah. Gary was a stepping stone on the way for yeah. her to get there. It was it was so tricky watching this episode because I have really loved the both of them together and to see them both really have such like an, an ugly breakup on TV, I was not expecting it to spiral and devolve as much as it did because I just thought... Yeah. I mean, I thought he was going to choose her. So it was really shocking to me to see how quickly everything changed. And that's kind of what happens when you don't handle someone's feelings, you know, the sweetest, most tender way. Gary completely right. dropped Leslie. And it makes a lot of sense why she is still kind of licking her wounds. I think that it is always sad to see a breakup end or like a relationship end with such sore feelings. And we always talk about, you know, ideally you end a relationship and you can still wish wish each other the best, have these warm feelings for each other, have this sense of we still care about each other. We can hold this love that we have for each other and still go our separate ways. And at the same time, because Leslie had a very specific hurt that was caused by Gary's actions, a very specific thing that actually was different from the Faith and Gary relationship because... You know, Gary kept comparing Leslie to, like, Faith and Ellen and the other women, which, by the way, was really weird. I don't know why Gary kept doing that. I'm like, these are not the same. This is not the same thing that you did. What you did to Faith is different from what you did to Leslie because Leslie was really under the impression that you were going to pick her because of things that you said that we all heard you say. So don't (laughs) act like it's the same as what happened with Faith. Yes, you told Faith you loved her, but you didn't say you're the one. (laughs) Like, you're the one I can't live without. You didn't say that to Faith, so I'm not sure why he kept comparing them. But I think because it was different, Leslie was hurt and was asking for Gary to acknowledge something that he did wrong in their relationship, which he wouldn't acknowledge. I think that in that situation, it becomes a little bit harder to walk away from a breakup peacefully. And I think that... In particular, one thing that was coming to mind in this scene is that it is so uncomfortable to watch to watch people be angry. And I think your instinct starts to become, God, why can't she just kind of 
get over it or something or like your instinct starts to become because she's the one who's angry so you kind of start to blame her for the discomfort right like and so I had a little bit of like is she being too difficult but as I was thinking that I was like damn like why can't women just be angry? <laughs> like, I know, give her her moment. When she was I on know. stage, it was really, I could tell that it was really healing for her to mm-hmm. have the opportunity to say these words to Gary and for Gary to squirm because he hasn't dealt with this kind of breakup yet. It's always been like, I wish you well and hugging and crying. But <laughs> yeah. she was absolutely like, I'm not giving you that because I haven't forgiven you yet. And that forgiveness is hard to extend when she feels ready to do it. Women's anger makes us uncomfortable. But honestly, I love love to see a woman choose not to just bend and push away her pain just to make other people feel comfortable and to make other people feel okay. I love that she stuck to her guns on it. And so, you know, do I think Leslie has wounds that she does need to heal? Yes, absolutely. She definitely has this ongoing trauma that, needs to be worked through and that I think will help her eventually enter into a healthy relationship. And also, I just loved how she handled this moment. I loved how she handled this breakup. I thought it was great. Uh, I was rooting for her. (laughs) I love the point that you made about how when she was angry, people could feel a little bit uncomfortable with how she was still holding on to that feeling. But it's her journey and it's her emotions to resolve. And I think that the way that she handled the breakup was as well as she could have in this current stage where she's at facing Gary, knowing that he got engaged and that he's getting married in two months and going on a honeymoon trip to Italy. For all of that, I think she handled it as gracefully and diplomatic as she could while kind of rewriting a story about who she was because on Mm. stage she was very strong and completely within her own worth of what she said, what she felt, and how she wanted to hold Gary accountable. And I think that was important for her to feel that. Okay, well, let us know down below what you all thought of Gary and Leslie's breakup. And what did you think about the way Gary handled the situation and the way Leslie handled it? Let us know your thoughts down below. Let's keep the conversation going. If you have watched this point in this video and you aren't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We will be covering every single episode of Joey's season, which starts in January. And so you don't want to miss it. So... Subscribe. Keep following along. (laughs) So there was a happy ending in last night's episode. It didn't feel (laughs) like it. (laughs) Because so much of Leslie and Gary's breakup dominated the screen. But Gary has proposed to Teresa. They are getting married in a few months. They seem very happy on stage. And I will say I have never really warmed up to Teresa as everybody that's watching and Kelly knows. Leslie has been my pick for quite a while, but I get why he chose Teresa and it became a little bit more clear outside of his morally ambiguous comments that he made about why he chose Teresa over Leslie, which once once again, just very icky. There should never be any comparison between two people and stacking them against each other the way that he did. But it did make a lot of sense in terms of how I think that there's a shared grounded understanding that two widows have about the way that they include their past partners and their past romantic histories along for the ride in this new chapter that they're building together. He has been able to talk about Tony in a way that Teresa understands because she talks about Billy that way. And after Mm. he proposed to her, she said it. She said, like, I think that Billy and Tony would be, like, really happy for the both of us. Like, that was maybe one of the first thoughts that she said on TV. And it shows that I really believe that's something that he's looking for. I think he wants to expand his love story to include everything that's come before them without any sense of like misguided jealousy or misunderstanding about what those stories had meant to them before because Gary has loved hard throughout the season he has cried on stage and been absolutely devastated seeing Faith again he has promised a lot of things to Leslie And me and Kelly have spoken about how, oh my gosh, like how would Teresa feel knowing these things or seeing this play out on TV? 
I actually feel like she would be quite accepting of it because she would maybe understand why Gary said those things and she would be a little bit more open-minded about the way that he led his journey in a way that maybe Leslie or other partners would not. And Mm. I just feel like the way that she could receive that with Grace, whether or not people agree if she should be accepting it or not, I think that's their relationship and whatever they decide in their relationship is right for them. It, It showed that Teresa, you know, like I think with dating, maybe she's not the sparkliest dater. Maybe she's not the most exciting and the most energizing. But I do think for a long-term compatible match, Teresa really showed that she was really quite aligned with Gary and even their values about like their earnesty and the naive attitude that they brought into dating also made a lot of sense. They just kind of synergized in a lot of things that made me feel like, okay, this is probably his ideal match. Yeah, I completely agree with that i think that as i was watching this episode i did start to just kind of get the Teresa and gary thing a lot more the way that they talk about their past spouses i've seen a lot of people comment that oh my goodness the only thing that Teresa and gary can talk about is their exes or their not their exes i guess their (laughs) spouses who passed away not technically (laughs) an ex um but people say like oh that's the only thing that they can relate about and you know, it's not even a real relationship because they, the only thing they have in common is being widows. But I really do think that there is something to be said for having that level of comfort or that level of being able to talk about this very unique experience of having this lifetime life partner who then passed away suddenly a few years ago and the unique grief that comes from that and the kind of emotional confusion that comes from wanting to keep them alive and in your head and wanting to acknowledge how much they are a part of you and Mm. wanting that to be an active part of your life and your dialogue while also pursuing your new relationship. And I think that's something, not that I'm saying people who haven't experienced being a widow can't understand that but I'm sure that it's just not the same it's just not the same as having someone who literally is going through the same complexity of emotion the same kind of confusing like oh my goodness I'm so excited to be getting engaged and also like it literally just makes me think about Billy like uh, it's so excited it's so exciting that I'm here I'm with you we're gonna get married and we're in love and also like I'm thinking about what Billy would think about this and that isn't something that invalidates their relationship. And I think that's something that those two will understand about each other in a way that I think other people will quite understand as much. And that being the foundation of their relationship doesn't mean that they don't have other things that they connect about. And so I think that it is something that make it, it made sense to me listening to them talk over the course of their date and just the little ways that they brought up their um, spouses. I thought it was just, it was just beautiful. And I can imagine why... Gary just felt calm and safe and himself around Teresa in a way that maybe he didn't feel as much with Leslie, even though the Leslie relationship felt more passionate. Um, There was something about that Teresa relationship and the way that they talked about various things. It just felt, I'm sure it feels so good to just be able to just openly kind of talk about this really important person to you without feeling like you're exhausting the other person or you're like wearing them down you know I I imagine I think about it this is absolutely not the same thing at all but like you know after you end a serious relationship with a partner Mm -hmm. and you kind of like feel like you want to just like kind of keep talking about it but you feel like okay my friends are getting tired of it I can't just keep talking (laughs) about my ex I can't just keep (laughs) blabbing or that you're in your new relationship maybe you like want to share like things that happened in your past relationship but then you're like well I don't want this I don't want my new guy to be like hurt or jealous or sad about the things that I've shared with my past and so you just like don't really talk about that stuff and that's fine it makes sense but I bet there is something really comforting for Gary to just feel like it's just totally chill for him to be open about that stuff with Teresa and she's going to be open about that stuff with him like I, I kind of get it you know it's such an excellent point that you made 
because that was really what finally clicked it into place for me because I just kept thinking, I don't really know if I see Teresa and Gary as a match, but I realized that was my own projection of maybe what I was thinking about in a partner or what I want for myself or what I would think Gary would want. But Gary, it's clear that he is really choosing with a sense of fullness. It doesn't mean that Teresa and Gary have had these amazing marriages of their past partners. It just meant that they built a life of them and they loved them when they passed away. It, I think that a lot of people on the internet were saying that they were trauma bonding over their past mm. partners and that's not what trauma bonding is. That's not what trauma <laughs> bonding is. I know, I saw that too. Like it's a guys. lot of weaponized therapy speak. Yeah, like that's not trauma bonding. Trauma bonding is based out of a toxic, abusive relationship. They didn't have that yeah. with their past partners. Despite the ups and downs they may have endured with Billy and Tony respectively, they were heartbroken when their partners unexpectedly passed away. That is not trauma bonding. That is something that they have uniquely gone through and the other person gets it and the other person can include it in their love story and their families will be able to still honor those memories and it's not like saying he couldn't have had that of any other partner because he absolutely could have but Teresa is a part of the story and Teresa is there and Teresa makes him feel really good and they have an amazing connection so this was just the thing that edged her over yeah when I saw people being like oh yeah like they're trauma bonding or just because they've been in these relationships doesn't mean that they've been happy their entire time no one is saying that they're not it's just no, a unique yeah. experience that they both individually get that yeah. it's pretty rare, you know? Like he didn't really experience that with a lot of other people his season to the depth that he did of Teresa. People are commenting like, oh, well, who says that him and Tony's relationship is perfect? I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure they had like no tons one of says. shit. <laughs> <laughs> like that's not the point. And you're right. I'm glad you brought up that thing about like trauma bonding. Trauma bonding is not when two people relate because they have similar past like <laughs> hurts that's not what it means to trauma bond trauma bond happens when yeah you're in an abusive relationship essentially and like you're going through trauma bonding is like when we go through all these ups and downs and like that's kind of the point and it's like we feel pulled to each other because we've had so many ups and downs and there's like trauma yeah. in our current relationship and we are bonding over it and that's what trauma bonding is that is not what's happening between uh Teresa and Gary that is uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm glad you brought that up. I agree that overall, I think Teresa and Gary, I wouldn't say that I'm like 100% rah-rah, I get it. Like I'm not like the most enthused ever It just about makes them sense. A, it's like a math equation. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I guess it does equal out to a relationship. Exactly, exactly. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Like I still feel like if I had looked at the beginning, which I mean, we literally did this, when we looked at the beginning and yeah. looking at all of the women, thinking about who we thought could end up with Gary in the end. Teresa was not one of them. And truly, we every single week, we were like, who do we think now is the front runner? I don't think I ever was like, I think it's Teresa. You were. You had a few moments where you were like, yeah, actually, I could see it being Teresa. I was never convinced, and I'm still not mm. convinced. But I do think that now seeing them, I'm like, okay, I could see this being a totally fine relationship. I'm not enthused about it but I, I i get it i think it's fine let us know what you think in the comments down below do you feel like gary and Teresa will last do you want to see their televised wedding in january do you think they'll make it to italy tell us down below and let's talk all right so now we're going to talk about bachelor in paradise super briefly blink and you'll miss it kind of conversation because <laughs> we don't have a lot to say it was i'm so happy that we were blessed with only an hour on our screens i mean i think for me I just, a lot of the relationships started falling apart and I just kind of wish that people would just start going home. I mean, if the finale is ostensibly next week and they're supposed to be getting engaged, I don't see the point of matching with someone just to match with someone and staying on the show. It just feels like to me, this whole season, the whole cast, it has not been what the producers wanted it to be. It's been... Very, very disappointing. I kind of just wish that people had taken a page out of Rachel's book and decided this beach is not for me. I'm getting out of here. I'm not going to find anything that I'm looking for. Rachel and Blake, I think they both made a really smart decision. People don't acknowledge this enough and people actually are often like, oh my gosh, why are you leaving? There's still other people to date. Like people 
often have that kind of reaction when people leave of their mm-hmm. own accord. But I do think that, especially at this point where there's apparently only like a day or two left of paradise, it's like you're not going to really be able to bond with someone that much. I mean, I get maybe if you want to just stay and just see, for example, like Jess and Tanner, that's been a relationship that I think both of them have been curious about the whole time. Jess has talked about being interested in Tanner since the first day. And this is kind of the first time where they're both available to actually pursue that. So that's like an example of two people that I kind of get wanting to just like, okay, we're both here in an environment that's all about dating. Let's just kind of take the next two days and just like, get to know each other that I kind of get but then there's other people who I'm like what are you even like Brayden I was like Brayden it's not happening just go just go home (laughs) just that's that's enough now you're not gonna get to the point of having anything super serious and you haven't connected with anyone on the beach it's not really happening so it's just kind of time to phone it in and you're right I appreciated that Rachel and Blake were just kind of like you know what it's that's that's it I'm pulling the plug because for Rachel specifically I mean this was just another example of like the producers just threw her under the bus right the fact that there was a rose ceremony and it was very clear that Rachel thought that she was going to give her rose to Jordan and Mercedes also thought she wanted to give her rose to Jordan the fact that they had Mercedes go before Rachel that was producers wanting to put Rachel in an embarrassing situation Again, this is exactly what we've been it. talking about. Like they are, they just want to embarrass Rachel. I think they find it to be entertaining, like pain, like television. And it's not, right? No one likes seeing Rachel in pain. I'm sorry. She's a wonderful person who doesn't deserve to be treated this way by all of these men and by production. And so it is honestly just, uh, I'm so frustrated by it I'm glad that she was like you know what I'm not gonna just stand up here and look like a fool and give this rose to a random person I'm outy it's done and I I, I'm glad that she left I think that she deserves better than this franchise and she was recognizing that you know and this is the truth of it on these shows all of these bachelor shows you know the producers are trying to balance some people they want to end up happy but some people they want to hurt they want to extract as much pain as possible because it's good television and so you have to recognize like where am I being which storyline have they put me under and if it's the pain storyline I don't need to stay here I'm out I gotta go and Rachel recognized that and I'm happy that she chose to leave because it's just she's literally just being abused by this show at this point and she doesn't deserve it. She doesn't deserve it. So I'm with you. Yeah. This has been a really, I think this is the worst season of Paradise I've seen in a really long time. I guess actually at this point, if I'm any of these people, I would just maybe just like stay to date just to like casually have fun and date. Like maybe that's what I would do if I was in this situation. We'll see how it plays out. Are there any couples that you're excited about that are still on the beach? Do you think anyone's gonna get engaged? Are you still watching it? Do you wanna watch it next week? Let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. It really helps us out a lot. Next week we'll be back for the three hour finale of Bachelor in Paradise. So we'll see you all then. Bye. Bye.